One of the powerful tools that Stable Diffusion offers is ControlNet, which allows you to finely adjust the generation of your images in Stable Diffusion. Here's how we build it. So let's drop down a Geonode, dive in there, and start using a prompt create, followed by a tokenizer. And we'll just copy those two and paste them here to generate negative prompts. So I definitely don't want a bad or ugly image. And let's prompt for a high quality detailed and professional image of a cat. All right, those go into a text encoder, positive prompt here, negative prompt here, and then that goes into a scheduler for a slot. The scheduler requires some noisy latents. So take the latent noise generate and make sure we are generating an image 512 by 512, because in this case we are using stable diffusion 1.5. All right, let's attach a solver to this. And for now, let's try solving this. So let's zoom out here. These are the latents. Let's attach an image decode to turn this back into an RGB image. Again, this is a bit larger. So let's press space and H to see a cat that we generated. Let's say we want to control how this cat and where this cat is placed in the image. And for that, I'm going to load in another image. So let's use the image to points here and point it to a URL here that I just paste. We can see we are loading in this image. Let's just rescale it to be 512 by 512. Now, to be able to control our solver using a control net, let's create one using a control net conditioning and a control net create. Control net has been trained on different inputs. So you could use canny edges, which are just edges detected through a standard image processing algorithm in the image. You could use more elaborate edge detection, such as HED, but also use a depth map, a normal map, or an open post skeleton. And as in most cases, we want to generate those guiding images from a normal RGB image. The control net conditioning is basically a converter or a pre-filter. So in this case, it's set up to be a canny edge detector. So now when we set the view flag on the control net conditioning here, we can see this generates these edges in here. We can also set this to use semantic segmentation, which then tries to segment this image into individual parts, such as here. And by the way, this works with any 2D image that you feed in through the image points node here. So you can use it on any image or image sequences that you like and directly save this out again. In our case, let's go with the depth estimation, which will generate a depth map just from a 2D image. Again, very useful also for other pipelines. And when you use it for the first time, this will trigger a download of a PyTorch model, which has been trained to generate this depth map from a 2D image. That takes a while as it's 1.4 gigabytes roughly, but once those files have downloaded, we can see this depth image. Let's use that to create a control net. And in this case, I'll just attach the control net create node down here below that and make sure I'll set it to the right control net. Again, there are different ones, which you can discover by Googling for this here in huggingface.co, or you can directly attach the individual suffix, in this case for the depth model. Again, let's put the view flag on here, and this finally goes into the solver's second slot in here. So let's see if that works here by setting the view flag on the Stable Diffusion solver. And in this case, it throws an error because I haven't downloaded the control net here yet. So let's uncheck local cache here, which immediately triggers the download of that depth control net, which again, is roughly 1.4 gigabytes again. Once that's downloaded, the solver solves and spits out some latents here. So let's set the view flag on the image decoder. And now we can see our cat has been generated in a position that closely resembles this depth map that we created here. And we can dial in how strongly this control net should influence our generation here, our image generation, by increasing or decreasing the conditioning scale on the SD control net create. So let's dial that back a bit. And after a short solve, we can see this. Also, we can combine control nets simply by creating another control net conditioning, in this case, from the very same image here. And in this case, let's just go with the standard canny edges and attach to this another control net create down here and set this to the control net canny, which I hopefully already downloaded. Let's see. Now, in order to combine both those control nets, let's merge those with a standard Houdini merge. And that's all there is. Notice, however, that the conditioning scale with multiple control nets currently does not work. So what you should do is set each of your control nets to one in order for both to work reliably. We are currently investigating why this is the case. Hopefully it's quickly being fixed in another update. But if you have any idea why that's happening and maybe want to help us to more quickly develop and update the toolkit, just participate by going to our GitHub and finding what we did wrong in the code there as the toolkit is open source. Or maybe just join our Discord server, link is on the GitHub page, and hint us in the right direction. All right, merge control nets, go into the solver, and again, 
Let's set the view flag on the image decoder. And after a short solve, we now have an image that is the result of both the depth as well as the canny control net. In this case, spitting out a bit of nonsense, but the typical use case for the combination of more than one control net is, for example, if you use the first control net with an open pose image, where you just have a skeleton. And then typically you use the second control net with some edge info, maybe canny or maybe HED, to define your character's appearance, not just its pose. And also the edge-based control nets are particularly good at fixing or driving the generation of hands, which stable diffusion sometimes on its own can have problems with. However, with one or more control nets, you can help stable diffusion and guide it to create proper hands or just objects at positions where you'd like them. All right, so that is your standard control net. One more thing that we could do, and let's just get rid of the second control net here and just use the first one using the depth map by simply disabling this merge here. So we're just using this control net here to generate this. Maybe I do not want to generate or regenerate my whole image, but just use this for in-painting. And of course this can be done. Again, using an image to points, set this to be 512 by 512. And again, in this case, I will make my life easier by pointing it to a URL where we have a mask which is surrounding our dog here. And again, that goes straight into the scheduler's mask input here. And now if we highlight the SD image decoder again and wait for our solver to solve, we should now see that this image is still the same. That is because the mask only works with image to image node. So we'll also feed our previous image, the dog image, as an image latent in here. So let's use an image encoder after our dog input image here, which turns this into latents and wire those latents in the image input of our scheduler. And now finally, when I highlight the image decoder down here and let the solver do its thing, then I've got, well, maybe not the most beautiful, but definitely a cat instead of a dog in painted in here. So now in order to get a more pleasing, appropriate image, what I'd have to do is play around with settings, number of inference steps, the CFG scale, of course, the image guiding strength, but also in this case, I'm only working with one control at the conditioning scale and a simple things such as the seed. And that is your control net in in-painting mode. So extremely powerful tool, which lets you combine the advantages of prompting to generate an image, text-based image generation with image and image feature driven image generation. And as the control nets accept not only depth map, but also simply a diffuse or a normal map, you could also use this as sort of a render engine when just passing your info passes from your traditional render engine in this node tree. All right, I hope you had fun with this. Again, if you create artwork using that toolkit, please share it. We're always on the hunt for beautiful demos. And if you find bugs or want to contribute to the development of this toolkit, just leave us an RFE on GitHub or join our Discord server. You'll find the link as well on our GitHub. Thanks so much and goodbye.